How's it going guys? It's Kyle or the How To Guy 123 here. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to create a multi-bootable USB flash drive with a Ventoy. No longer will you need to use several different flash drives for all your different bootable ISO images. Whether you have a separate flash drive to install Windows 10, Windows 11, or different Linux distributions, with Ventoy, you can boot all these different operating systems off of a single USB flash drive by directly placing the ISO image onto the USB. Let's begin by installing Ventoy onto our USB flash drive. Start off by plugging your flash drive into your computer. For this tutorial, I'm using a fairly basic 32GB USB 3.0 flash drive. Obviously, the bigger your USB flash drive, the more ISO images you'll be able to store and boot from. With 32GB, I was able to store 9 different ISO files on the USB. Those ISO files were a variety of Windows and Linux ISO images. A 32GB USB would be the minimum USB size that I would install Ventoy on. A 64 or 128GB would probably be more ideal. Anyways, we're going to need to format the flash drive, so go to this PC, right click on the flash drive, and choose Format. I'm going to leave all the format options as default. Keep in mind that formatting the USB flash drive will erase all the data on it, so make sure that you've made a backup of any important files before continuing. Click on the start button to format the drive, then click on OK on the data loss warning. After a few seconds, the format should be complete and you can close out of the format windows. Next, open up your internet browser and head to the first link in the description below. This will bring you to ventoy.net, which is where we can download Ventoy. Once on the home page, click on the downloads button on the top bar. And once on the downloads page, you'll see a Windows and Linux version of Ventoy. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to click on the Windows version, and then you'll be redirected to a GitHub page. Just scroll down, and once again select the version of Ventoy you want to download, and the download will begin. Ventoy will download in a zip file, and I'm going to move it out of my downloads folder onto my desktop just for easy access. We're now going to need to extract the zip folder. I'm going to use WinRAR to do so, but you can use whichever extraction program you'd like. I'm going to right click on the folder, go down to WinRAR, and choose Extract Here, which will extract a single folder onto my desktop, which when you open it, contains all the files we're going to need to install Ventoy onto our USB. Once you're in the Ventoy folder, look for the Ventoy to Disk program and double click on it to open it. This is the program we're going to use to install Ventoy onto our USB and make our USB multi-bootable. On your device, make sure that the USB flash drive that you want to install Ventoy on is selected. So in my case, it's the D drive, which is my Kingston 32GB flash drive. Next, in the top right hand corner, click on Option and make sure that Secure Boot support is checked. This will allow you to use Ventoy on computers with Secure Boot enabled. Then under Partition Style, this can be left as MBR. After that, click on the Install button to install Ventoy onto your flash drive. You'll then get a warning prompt that the drive will be formatted and all the data on the drive will be erased. Just click Yes, and then you'll get prompted again just to confirm, so click Yes again, and Ventoy will begin to install onto your USB. The install process should only take a few seconds. When the install is complete, you'll get a prompt that says that Ventoy was successfully installed onto your USB. Just go ahead and click on OK. One thing I want to mention here real quick is that if you download a newer version of Ventoy, then what is already installed onto your USB, you can click on the update button to update Ventoy on the USB without erasing any bootable ISOs already on it. We can now close out of Ventoy 2 disk and it's time to add bootable ISOs to our Ventoy USB. If we head back to Ventoy.net and click on Tested ISO, you'll see a list of all the different bootable ISOs for all the operating systems that are supported with Ventoy. All the versions from Windows 7 to Windows 11 are supported, along with probably over 100 different Linux distributions. Once you have your bootable ISO images downloaded, simply drag them to the root directory of the USB. As I mentioned previously, for this example, I'm going to put 9 different bootable ISO images onto the USB. I'll be adding the install images for Windows 10 and Windows 11, along with 5 different Linux distributions, Memtest86, and Hiren's Boot CD PE, which is a Windows 10 based environment with tools to recover and fix your PC outside of Windows. Once all of the bootable ISO images are done transferring to your USB, you can restart your computer to boot into it. 
To boot to the USB, I'm going to open up my computer's boot menu. To open up the boot menu on my PC, I'm going to press the F11 key on my keyboard before booting into Windows. The key to access your boot menu will vary between computers. Once in the boot menu, I'm going to use the arrow keys to select my USB and press enter to boot into it. Your computer will then boot into Ventoy, and you'll see a list of all the bootable ISO images on the USB. You can use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate the list, and you can press the enter key to boot to a selected ISO image. So in this case, I'll boot into the install image for Ubuntu 2204. Next, choose to boot the ISO image in normal mode, and Ventoy will boot into the ISO you've selected. As you can see here, Ventoy has booted into the grub menu for the Ubuntu installer. Here, I'm just going to choose try or install Ubuntu. And then I'll be taken to the installer. I'm just going to click try Ubuntu since I don't want to install it onto my SSD and overwrite Windows. But we are able to try and use the full OS running directly off of the USB. I did run into one problem with Ubuntu in this case where my entire screen was green, but I was able to fix it by opening up a terminal window and running the following command. This command opens up a config file for the GNOME Display Manager, and I just had to change Wayland Enable to True, then save the file. I then ran the command sudo systemctl restart gdm3, which will restart the GNOME Display Manager. And once the GNOME Display Manager was restarted, my screen was back to normal, and I was able to fully use and test out Ubuntu running off the USB without installing it. Anyways, I'm going to boot back into Ventoy, and I'm going to try and boot into the Windows 11 install image. Once again, choose to boot it in normal mode. And after a few seconds, we will be booted into the Windows 11 installer. The last ISO I'd like to boot from Ventoy as an example is Hiren's Boot CD PE, which I briefly mentioned earlier. When we boot into it, we are presented with a desktop environment with tools to recover and fix our PC outside of Windows. Hiren's Boot CD includes tools for OS and data recovery, virus removal, diagnostics, etc. So it can be very handy to keep on your Ventoy USB so you can quickly boot to it and repair any computer on the fly. If you wanted to keep your Ventoy USB a little more organized, you can place your ISO files into folders. For this example, I've put all the ISO images for different Linux distros in one folder, install images for Windows 10 and 11 in another, and one more folder for PC diagnostic and recovery tools. When you boot back into Ventoy, all of your ISO files will still be put in a single list, but if you press the F3 key on your keyboard, it will show the file structure of the USB and you'll be able to navigate the different folders to locate your ISO. This can be useful if you have a large USB with a lot of ISO files on it. Finally, you can change the look of Ventoy with themes. Ventoy is based off of Grub, which is a bootloader to choose which operating system to boot when dual booting with Linux. This means that there are a lot of themes out there to customize Ventoy with. A website that has a lot of Grub themes that you can download is gnomelook.org. I'll leave a link for gnomelook in the description below. Make sure that you're on the Grub themes tab, and you can pretty much choose any of these themes to customize Ventoy with. For this example, I'll download the Vimix theme. Once you've chosen a theme, click on the download button, and you may see a few different versions of the theme. The Vimix theme has a 4K, 1080p, and 2K version, so download the theme based off the resolution of your monitor. In this case, I'll download the 1080p version of Vimix. The theme will most likely download in a tar.exe file, which you should be able to open up in any extraction program like WinRAR or 7-zip. I'll open up my theme in WinRAR, and then I'm just going to minimize it for a second and head back into my Ventoy USB. Once you've opened up your USB, create a folder in the root directory alongside your ISO files and call it Ventoy. Then go ahead and open it, and create another folder called Themes within the Ventoy folder. Now open up the Themes folder, now head back into WinRAR, and open up every folder until you see a file called theme.txt. So in my case, I'll open up the Vimix 1080p folder, then Vimix, and you can see the last file in the Vimix folder is called theme.txt. Once you've found the theme.txt file, go up one folder and drag the folder with theme.txt in it into the themes folder on your USB. 
Now go back into the Eventoid folder on your USB and create a new text document and call it eventoid.json. You'll get a warning for changing the file name extension, just click on yes. Now open up the file in any text editor, I'll just open it up in notepad. And once ventoid.json is opened in notepad, paste in the following code which I'll provide in the description below. Now just change where it says file to the file path on our USB for theme.txt. So in this case, all I really need to do is change blur to vimix. After that, save the file and you can restart your computer and boot back into Ventoy. And once you're back in Ventoy, you should see that the theme has been changed. And that's pretty much everything you need to know on making a multi-bootable USB with Ventoy. If this video helped, please leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.